Hi class, let's talk linear algebra. Last class, we were talking about how awesome diagonal matrices are. The problem that we have, of course, is that not all matrices are diagonal matrices. The good news is that sometimes we can make a matrix diagonal using eigenvalues. So let's have a definition. First, A is some n by n matrix as per usual. Definition, A is diagonalizable if there exists a non-singular matrix X and a diagonal D, a diagonal matrix D, such that X inverse A X is equal to D. In this case, we say that X diagonalizes A. Start with the matrix A. There exists a non-singular matrix so that when we multiply on one side with X inverse and on the other side with X, then we get a diagonal matrix. Said otherwise, A is similar. to a diagonal matrix, if you remember what similar means. All right. The trick, of course, is knowing when a matrix is diagonal. Let's shed some light on this. Theorem 35. A, an n by n matrix, is diagonalizable. if and only if A has N linearly independent eigenvectors. Proof. This is an if and only if, so we have to go in both directions. Let's go right to left first. So we're going to start with n linearly independent eigenvectors and we're going to prove that A is diagonalizable. Okay, if you've got eigenvectors you have corresponding eigenvalues. So just to name them we're going to say that lambda 1 through lambda n are the corresponding eigenvalues. Here's how the proof goes. We're going to set X to be a matrix. How do we form this matrix? Well, the columns of the matrix are going to be these eigenvalues that we have. So these are the columns. We know that this is invertible by theorem 23 because its columns are linearly independent. So here's what I want to point out. We're going to look at A, our matrix, times X. By the power of matrix multiplication, this is the same as A times each column. So the columns of AX are A times the columns of the corresponding column in X. But we know what the XIs are. They are eigenvectors of A, which means that A times X is simply the corresponding eigenvalue times the appropriate eigenvector. All right, let's break this down in terms of matrix multiplication. This is this matrix times lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way down the diagonals with the zeros elsewhere, which is simply x times some 
diagonal matrix D, where we've defined D to be this matrix here. Putting it all together, AX is equal to XD. Since X is invertible, we can multiply both sides by X inverse, and we'd get X inverse AX is equal to the diagonal matrix D. We started with N linear independent eigenvectors. We ended with the fact that A was diagonalizable. That's one direction. Let's do the other direction. So going left to right, we're going to assume that A is diagonalizable. And we're going to prove that it has N linearly independent eigenvectors. All right. So if it's diagonalizable, by definition, that means that there exists a non-singular matrix X and a diagonal matrix D such that X inverse A, X is equal to D, which of course means that AX is equal to XD by multiplying both sides on the left by the matrix X. All right, let's take a closer look. Say X is this matrix where the columns are given by the X eyes and D is some diagonal matrix, of course, where there's only the only non-zero entries along the diagonal and it's zero elsewhere. Then you'll notice something. Notice that AX is going to be, well, the columns of AX are going to be A times the columns of X. All right, and what is XD? If you are actually going to multiply this out, you will notice that the columns of XD are the columns of X multiplied appropriately by the diagonal entries of D. Work this out for yourself. All right, let's talk about what this means. So what does it mean that AX is equal to XD? AX being equal to XD simply means that AXJ, the jth column of AX, is equal to DJJXJ for all J between 1 and N. And that equation by itself tells us that DJJ is an eigenvalue of A with eigenvector xj. All right, we add the fact that x was non-singular. That of course means that its columns are linearly independent. By theorem 23. So that means that a has n linearly independent eigenvectors, the x, j's, where j goes from n, well, from 1 to n. That proves it. End of proof. QED. Before we do some examples, some things I want to point out. Note, if a and b an n by n matrix has n distinct eigenvalues, we've proved previously that that implies that it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. This, of course, was theorem 20, 34. In this case, by what we've just proved, that means that if A has n distinct eigenvalues, A is diagonalizable. The next thing that I want to point out is that this naturally leads to a definition. An n by n matrix, if it has fewer than n linearly independent eigenvectors, 
as in it's not diagonalizable, we say A is defective. By theorem 35 that we just proved, defective matrices are not diagonalizable. And an example of this, of course, is this matrix, 1, 1, 0, 1. The eigenvalues are going to sum to the trace, which is 1 plus 1, and multiply to the determinant, which is 1 by 1, which is 1. It follows that the eigenvalues are 1 with multiplicity, so 1 and 1. Here's an exercise for you. What are the eigenvectors of A as above, 1, 1, 0, 1? This should be an example of a defective matrix. All right, let's actually go back to what we're focusing on, diagonalizable matrices, and let's do an example of that. Example, diagonalize A is equal to 1, 1, negative 2, 4. This is a multi-step process. So just to highlight that, here are the steps. We're going to have to find the eigenvalues. And then we're going to have to find the eigenvectors. We're going to construct our x. Where are we going to get that from? We're going to get that from our eigenvectors. And we're going to ha then have to construct our diagonal matrix that we're going to use, that's going to come from the eigenvalues. And then we're going to arrange it. x inverse a x is going to be d. Let's do the example start to finish. All right, so here's our a. 1, 1, negative 2, 4. Let's find the eigenvalues. All right, we're going to use our first method. So we're going to look for a minus lambda i and the determinant of that. This is going to be 1 minus lambda, 1, negative 2, 4 minus lambda, and find the determinant. It's going to be 1 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus, minus 2 by 1. If we simplify this, we're going to get lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6, and that's going to be lambda minus 3, lambda minus 2. The eigenvalues are lambda is equal to 2 and lambda is equal to 3. Step 2. Find the eigenvectors. So lambda 1 is equal to 2. So we're going to look for a minus lambda i, where lambda is equal to 2. So this is 1 minus 2, 1, negative 2, 4 minus 2, which is negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. Our eigenvectors are going to be in the null space of this matrix. And if you check carefully, 1, 1 is in the null space of a minus 2i. Similarly, for lambda 2 is equal to 3, the second eigenvector, we're going to look at a minus lambda 2i. This is 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 3, which is negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1. 1, 2, is in the null space of a minus 3i. And so all together, we've got eigenvectors 1, 1, and 1, 2. All right, we're on our way. Let's construct x, and let's construct d. x is the matrix 
whose columns are the eigenvectors. So here we've got the eigenvectors. In this case, since there were two distinct eigenvalues, we can be sure that these are linearly independent. Okay, what is this actually? This is going to be 1, 1, 1, 2. Let's construct our diagonal matrix. This is going to be the diagonal matrix where the eigenvalues are down the diagonal. And these eigenvalues have to be in the correct order, as in lambda 1 is the eigenvalue corresponding to x1, the first column of x, and lambda 2 is the eigenvalue corresponding to x2. What is this? This is going to be 2, 3 down the diagonal, and zeros elsewhere. Before we diagonalize A, we actually also have to calculate what x inverse is. x inverse is going to be 1 over the determinant of x, so 1 by 2 minus 1 by 1, um, multiplied by the adjoint, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Altogether, this is 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Let's construct our diagonalization. All right, we should have that x inverse a x should be equal to d, as in 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 4, times x should be equal to our diagonal matrix. And if you went through and checked this, you'd see that it's correct. Or we could do something interesting and rearrange this equation by multiplying on the left by x and multiplying on the right by x inverse. We're going to get a is equal to x d x inverse, as in 1, 1, negative 2, 4 should be equal to x times our diagonal matrix times x inverse. This factorization of A into three matrices, the outside matrices being inverses of each other and the middle matrix being a diagonal matrix, is extraordinarily important for our applications. For now, let me leave you with an exercise. In the same way that we just did, diagonalize this matrix, 2, 4, 3, 3. You might have some lingering questions. The most obvious is, when would it be useful? To diagonalize a matrix. That, of course, is coming up. Another question that you might ask, uh, especially when you're going through that last exercise, is, is there only one possible x that can diagonalize a matrix A? And kind of as a sub-question or a hint, can you simply uh, rearrange the columns. I'll leave you with that question. Think on these things. Talk to you next time.